Hi, welcome to Gone Fishing. I'm TJ Schwanke. Today, Bob and a special guest, Lori Taylor, are out on beautiful Lake of the Woods. They're going to be trolling crankbaits on some of the Mid Lake reefs for big walleye. Stay tuned, you're going to see some great action. <laughs> He does start thrashing around. Boy, I heard him. This is some beautiful fish in here. Well, you found a gold mine. Yeah, nice gold and black walleyes. Well, that didn't take very long. No, not at all. Good fish. Hi, I'm Bob Kirkpatrick. I got a good friend of mine, Lori Taylor, with me from Winnipeg. He's been telling me about the great fishing out in Lake of the Woods for walleyes. We're fishing the reefs. We just got here a couple casts, and I think this is what we're in for the rest of the day. Wow, that's nice, Lori. Boy, yeah, look at the are. color on those fish. Yeah, nice color, isn't it? That's beautiful. What we're doing today, or what we're going to do, is try working crankbaits on these reefs for walleyes, and there's several different ways we can do this. Right now we're just gonna cast up on the on the reefs. We may try some trolling a little later and show you some different methods. Boy, that method's working great. That's Those nice are beautiful color. fish. Beautiful color. You can get this one back in the water right away. So what we did, we came in here and marked out some of the reefs. This reef tops out at four feet, drops off into about 40 feet of water. Now wind's blowing in and it's blowing in a bunch of the forage fish. These walleyes are feeding on ciscos and Lori suggested we uh, try to use something that represents the cisco so we're trying um, silver and black crankbaits what we started with. Like I said it didn't take long to get going but uh, Lori you've been fishing out here for quite a while. About 10 years. So you it takes a while to get to know a lake like this doesn't it? For sure. The Lake of the Woods has got a lot of islands, a lot of reefs, a lot of spots to fish, and some produce and some don't. It's, it's a tough job. Well, you tell me that a lot of these reefs will hold big fish. A lot of them, a lot of big fish. Uh, you might only get three or four fish off one spot, then you got to move. I don't think that the bigger fish live in big schools of 30, 40, or 100 fish. I think there's five or six that are there, and that's about it. And get the two or three that are going and get to the next spot. Oh, geez, there's another good one, Lori. It's got a good fish, Bob. Wow, he's pulling like yeah. crazy. This is a little bigger. Net. I might have to chase this one with the electric. Well, you weren't kidding when you said there's good fish in here on this reef. Yes. So, do you find that there's a, a better afternoon or evening bite here than, than the middle of the day? Uh, usually the evening's a good bite for crankbaits, but sometimes they'll go all afternoon doing this. Wow, that's another nice yeah, fish. Well, he must fish. have flashed out at the, yeah. the bait. I've got him foul hooked here. That's why he fell so heavy. Boy. Now, also you were saying, Lori, that uh, uh, in some areas of the lake you have to fish barbless and in other areas you don't. Yeah. In this area that we're in we can use uh, we can use barb or barbless hooks, but really you don't need to have the barbs on there. The way no. these fish are slamming, they're holding on good. Yeah. Boy, that's a beautiful wall. Yeah. They're so brightly colored in here, it's just gorgeous. I'm gonna get this one back in. 
beautiful fish. Great. Well, it's no sense keeping a fish that size either. They're not the best eating fish, but not at all. They're sure fun to catch out. If you put them back, you can come back and catch them another day. Come back tomorrow. I want to get another one. Let's get after it. Okay. And what we've been using working the tops of these reefs is a deep diving thunder stick. You might be wondering why are we using a, a deep diver when we're fishing reef that tops out at five or six feet. Well, the idea is that uh, we cast up on top of the reef and start reeling it in. We're making quite short casts, and we want this to dive as quick as possible. So it just comes down to the, to the top of the reef and follows the contour down. Now, if this lure is trolled behind uh, when we're fishing a long line, we could get it down as deep as 25 or 28 feet, but you'd have to put out 240 or 50 feet of line. So we wanted to get down as quick as possible. Now we worked the top of the reef over real good and uh, feel that we've, we've caught all the active fish are on top. Swing out a little bit and we're marking deeper fish. So instead of moving on to another place, we're going to give this a, another good going over, but we're going to switch baits. Now I still want to use that same color, but we don't have enough room to set up a long trolling run. The reef is right out in the middle of the lake here, and we've got a short area to work. So uh, what we're going to do instead is hook up a three-way rig. I'm going to use a bait. This is a, another Storm Thunderstick, a shallow diver, and it only will dive about five or six feet on its own. So what we've done is we've added a three-way swivel and a dropper line with a, with a bell sinker on it. Now this way we can fish this bait at any depth we want. What we're going to do is work the outside edge of the reef, probably in 15 or 16 feet of water, and go around the reef and try that. After we've caught any active fish there, we'll move on to some new reefs and again start by casting on top and working out the outside edges and keep moving on. We might come back to this reef a little later, give the fish time to, to regroup and uh, just keep moving on. So there's, there's a lot of ways that you can fish crankbaits. Um, people have trouble deciding which baits to use that are running certain depths, but uh, if you modify your techniques a little bit with something like the, the dropper and the three-way rig, you can fish any depth with any crankbait. But we just started using this three-way system, working on the outside edge of the reef in 15 or 16 feet of water. I barely got my line down there and Lori's got one on. Geez, that looks like a nice fish, yeah, too. Some decent fish. There you go. Oh, there's a that's nice a fish, beauty. boys. That's what we came for. That is a beautiful fish. Wow. Well, for some reason, Lori, the fish in here really go after those crank. They sure do, don't they? Boy, that was quick. That's a nice beautiful fish. fish. Be a little careful with these all these treble hooks in here getting yeah, this out. And there, Bob. Might need a pair of pliers. Where would they be? Uh, right beside the steering wheel there, there's a well, these barbless hooks, so you shouldn't have much trouble getting it out of there. There you go. It's a nice thing about the barbless hooks. These big fish that just come out so easy, you don't hurt them. Wow. That is beautiful. That's a nice fish. Like I said, we just started working this with the, with the three-way rigs. Didn't go 10 feet and bang. Okay. So there's a lot of ways you can fish those crankbaits. Boy, that is nice. Nice they color, right? Eh? They're so pretty in here. Yeah. And what do you guess that one's going to weigh? got to be at least six, I would think. Maybe Great fish more. to catch in a tournament. Yeah. Well, we'll get this one back in the water. Where are those fish when we need them in the tournament? <laughs> That's beautiful. doing with these three ways is, um, as Bob you can see has got his all set up there, but it's very important to, uh, we're fishing a lot of rock and you got to just get to the bottom and then just reel it up a little bit because you don't, you'll, you'll be in the rocks more times than you can shake a stick at and that's not going to catch any fish doing that. But it's very important to keep it out of the rocks so they get snagged so easy. You got to keep going, letting line out, you know, hit the bottom then lift it up a little bit and that's about all there is to it. Oh, the other nice thing about Lori is, is you can change different depths too. Like you can work from 15 to 20 feet and just let a little bit more line out. You know that your your bait's always, in, you know, so many feet off the bottom or so close to the bottom. So you don't have to continually adjust your uh, change baits all the time. Just adjust your depth. You can reel it in if you're coming up shallower. Let it down if you're going down a little bit deeper. And another real important thing that we mentioned before is the marker boy. Now you get out into a lake like this and mark those reefs. 
and if the wind comes up, it's so easy to get blown off your spot. So you have to have that marker boy out there for a reference point and you just keep working around it. Now the wind is really picked up, so what we decided to do was cover a little more ground by using the big motor. We're still using a storm thunder stick, the deep diver, and there's a long reef of rocks in here stretches out for about four or five hundred yards and we're trying to stay in a 15 foot level. So the deep diver, if I let out about 40 feet, oh, Chloe's got one on. I'll have to take over and run the boat. We've got to stay off the rocks. Lost them. Oh, got off? Yeah, lost them. And what we're trying to do is stay in about 15 feet of water. This drops off into 40 or 50 feet of water real quick. I'm letting Lori drive the boat, he's familiar with the water. It really zigzags in and out, so it, it helps if you know where you're at. Uh, when we're running the baits along here, it's a good idea to pump them back and forth. It changes the, the speed of the bait. When you let it off like that, the bait actually rises, so it, sometimes it's just a change in action that'll, that'll get those walleyes to strike. There's one right now. But that didn't take long again. If we, if we stay in this 15 foot range, that seems to be where the walleyes are. Can't get up any closer. Lori's going to have to drive the boat and keep us off the rocks. This wind is really picked up. But that's one of the other advantages of using a crankbait is you can cover a lot of water. Now, uh, probably more walleyes are caught on live bait than anything else, but it, it's usually a slow presentation. You uh, find the walleyes, key in on them, and then and sit and fish them. But with a crankbait, you can cover a lot of water. That's a decent fish. Nice fish. And some of the other advantages of using the crankbait is that you get a lot more fishing time and you're not always messing with, uh, with live bait. There's certain areas that uh, you go to where live bait is illegal or hard to get or, or you run out of it with a crankbait. You can fish it anywhere at any time. I think I'm going to need the pliers to get okay. this out, Lori. I don't know where I left them. Oh, there they are up front. I'll have to watch these rocks we don't get in too close. We're okay right now. Yeah, it's probably about a good 100 yard stretch of rocks all along through here. And they, they come out this way and that way, so you gotta know where you're going. Another nice, another nice Lake of the Woods walleye. Oh, yeah. He's anxious to get back. I'm gonna get him back there. Okay, I think we're gonna have to move the boat before we get washed up on shore under the rock. Okay. It's a two man system. When you get a fish like this with these rocks, you gotta keep out of the out of the rocks. So one guy's got to run the boat while the other guy looks after the fish. Wow, what oh. action. <laughs> Double header. Double header. Unbelievable. Now, this is going to be a little bit of work. We got to get this in quick and stay off the rocks. Oh, that's a beauty. There's a good fish. We okay with the rocks here, Lori? Yeah. Boy, this is action I've only dreamed of. This is great. Oh, he's got nice a good. fat, chunky fish. You might have to land that one by hand. Like yeah. I got this one tangled in the net. Well, you sure put us on some great fish here, Lori. Oh, boy. I'm gonna have to... I don't wanna do this. Beautiful fish. You get that one back in, Lori, and hand me the players. This one's this oh, one yeah. hit it hard. Okay. Right at your right in front there. Wow, anytime you can catch fish like this, this crankbait action is fast. Gorgeous fish. Now, usually, I like guess water is crystal clear. You can see down 10, 12 feet. And normally, uh, when the water when the water's that clear, these fish will feed mostly in low light conditions, like in the evening. But as you can see, we've got a real cloudy day. There's lots of wave action, so that's breaking up the surface, and the water isn't, or the light isn't penetrating into the water as deep. And, and the walleye can have an advantage over their prey at this time. So when it's windy and choppy and cloudy, the walleyes will feed all day. Okay. Now. There's several ways to find out how deep a crankbait's running or how much line you have to let out. And, and probably the most common way is trial and error. You find a, a depth, like today we're fishing uh, 15 feet. You find an area that's at 15 feet, let out a line from your crankbait until 
it touches bottom and then reel it in a little bit. And being able to repeat to get your crankbait back down to the depth that you're catching fish at is probably the most important thing about fishing with crankbaits. You have to be able to put that bait back in the zone that the fish are at. Now, one of the easier ways, at least to, to get started, is there's a couple of books on the market that are all about crankbaits, and this is one of the newer ones that's on the market. And I'll just uh, flip to the page that talks about the Storm Deep Thunderstick, and it'll tell me uh, what depth I want to fish. I look at 15 feet here on the graph, and it tells me to put out 40 feet of line. And so that gives you a very close idea, and you can, you can adjust a little bit there, but it makes it a lot simpler. It gives you a starting point, and it, it seems to really work good. Now, how I'm measuring my depth of line on this particular rod that I'm using, we're just using a, a six and a half, seven foot bait caster, and I've got 10 pound test Berkley XT on there. Uh, I tells me to let out 40 feet, so I give it 20 pulls on the line here, and that's approximately two feet each. And uh, that gets me down approximately 40 feet. Now if we move into 12 or 13 feet of water, I can feel it start bumping the bottom. If we move out into 17 or 18 feet, it isn't at all. So I know I'm in the right depth, and that seems to be the depth that we're catching the fish at. It's just another method that uh, gives you a starting point and gives you an idea of, uh, of how deep your lures are running. Well, with this wind pushing us, uh, you know, moving us all the time, it puts a lot of extra pressure on the on the fish, so they can feel a lot bigger than they are. But boy, there's nothing wrong with a fish like that. Oh, wow. Now it's a good idea to have a when you're fishing with crankbaits to have a net, one of the the rubberized or coated nets. It makes makes fishing a lot easier. There, I got that one out. Unfortunately, I don't have mine with me, and there's a lot of tangles in the net. That's another nice little fish. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Now, there's a couple of real important things that you should know when you start fishing with crankbaits, regardless of what species it is that you're after. First off, if you have a, a split ring on your crankbait, tie it direct. Don't use a swivel. Now, you can use a snap, uh, just a plain cross-lock snap won't take away from the action too much, but with a swivel, it takes away a lot of the crankbait's action. Another thing, very important, is make sure that your baits are tuned. Now, what I mean by tuning your baits is to be sure that they're running true. If a bait is running off to one side or the other, it isn't getting down to the depth that it's supposed to, and it isn't doing its job properly. It won't be near as effective. So how we tune a bait, to start with, just put it in the water and run your boat put it out a few feet beside the boat and see if it is running straight. If it runs off to one side or the other, you have to tune it. And how we tune these baits is there's a small eye that the split ring is attached to. Take a pair of pliers and bend the eye one way or the other. Keep trying it until the bait run, runs straight. This will make your baits a lot more effective and you'll catch a lot more fish. Feels good. Maybe shut that boat. Yeah, I'll shut the motor off there, Boy. Bob. Looks like a good fish. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes with the wind blowing like it is, but yeah. it feels good. It's not coming very easy. Oh, get my rod in here. Lure in here. Now, how did you find this place, Lori? I know, I know that uh, you're the one that seems to have found this place. I've heard about it from some of our mutual friends. But how did you find the place? Oh, about eight years ago, we just decided to go for a boat ride and got this little map out and the way we went and uh, got to the spot where we looked in the map, oh, this might be a pretty good place, and uh, threw in a couple of casts, and we got two five-pound fish back to back. The wind was blowing so hard that day that we had to go back home because our boat was so small back then, and we just were really getting into fishing, and uh, that's about how we found it, and been back ever since. It's a nice fish, Bob. You need the net for that, or? No, I'm going to try and get it in my hand. hand. Be careful with these. Oh, these hooks. Whoa. Yeah, that's the problem with the crankbaits is uh, you got to be careful. Oh, he's a nice fish. Oh. Wow. It's a nice fish. Look at that. Pretty. A lot of times you hold them under the belly like that, they won't uh, paralyze them for some reason. I'm going to get a grip on him anyway while you take okay. that out just in case he does start thrashing around. Boy. 
heard them. This is some beautiful fish in here. We'll start kicking their fish. You found a gold mine. Yeah, nice gold and black walleyes. Now you're telling me earlier about some good days. What's one of your most productive days out here? Uh, the most productive day we've had out here would be about a, two years ago, I guess, and we we're fishing the same area and using the same same lures, storm thunder sticks, and. Uh, I think we got 30 fish one evening in about three hours. I like that. All like this or both? All like that. Yeah. What's the biggest fish you've taken out of here? Uh, 11 and a half. Lots no. of eights, lots of nines. Not a lot of fish under five pounds? No, very few. The odd three pounder, but most of them are like that. That'd be, I see your average fish. Well, the colors on these fish are gorgeous. Now, if you ever want to take some photos, now, I've never seen fish that look as nice as this. They're gold color. That's got to do because of the clear water that's in here. I would feed. imagine that would be the feed and the clear water, eating those ciscos. And you get into into bog stained water, and the fish are a lot darker. And and then some of the uh, muddy waters that we fish, the fish are really gray looking. Yeah, the lakes in Saskatchewan. I noticed that that the fish are really. Uh, greenish gray color compared to these nice gold ones and the tops they're just green on the top they're yeah. just gorgeous healthy looking fish though gorgeous i'm gonna yeah. get this one back in the water yeah. that's great beautiful fish right about near the end of this patch you got one on yeah i got one bob i got Jeez, one i got one too i got a double one. header double header just starting to rain. It, it, can't, just, it can't get any better than yeah. this, Lori. We're just starting talking about time to head home, beat the rain, but yeah, there's a rainstorm coming. I think this is the end of it. Yeah. We'll go in. If uh, conditions change a little bit, maybe we'll come back. Wow. You know, Lori, I got to thank you again. This has been the best day of walleye fishing I've ever had in my life. And on crankbaits, it's it's a riot. I Mike. just, it's been fabulous. Excellent, eh? I want to thank you for bringing me out here. There's a good fish pop. Oh boy. There's a nice fish. Wow. They're both nice fish. Yeah. Look at this. Bite like crazy. Now how are we going to do this? I don't know, Bob. The rain's coming. This one looks like about six. I haven't even seen. Oh yeah, there's this one. It's another five or six pounder. Yeah. We've caught so many fish today that we don't even care if they get off by themselves. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Well, I'll see if I can get him in my hand here without hurting myself. Oh, there's mine. And there's mine. Nice barb. Um, see, all these, see all these barbless hooks work so nice. You just this pull them out like that. That's great. Got to get a little better grip on this guy. This has got to be some of the best walleye fishing in the world, especially on the crankbaits. It's a different way to do it. Look at that. Wow. Thanks again, Lori. Beautiful fish, eh? Make sure you join us again next time on Gone Fishing.